Howdy YouTube, so I'm going to show you how to set up a Apache 2 server with multiple sites that's relatively secure. Okay, um, so I have fail to ban and pre-shared authentication keys running on my server. Um, I also disabled root and any sort of password login. So in order to get this working, I had to do a few things. Um, they're not very complicated, but I figured uh, if you're new to this, I'd make a convenient video for you. So uh, I ran SSH keygen on my client system. Uh, I've done this before because I was actually migrating my server to uh, cloud hosting, unfortunately. But um, besides the point, uh, a conventional Debian install won't have sudo installed. I believe it might change with Buster, but uh, not to get on a diatribe, you will need your user that has the pre-shared key as, well, with root privileges of some sort. Uh, I guess you can always just use su, but I, I prefer using sudo. So I created a new user called tripcode, which is the same uh, username as the user on my desktop, which makes it a little bit easier to SSH into. And then I proceeded to add that user to the user group sudo. Um, on the client system, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna run SSH keygen again. Um, normally it will give you the ability to like set a password and show you a nice uh, little uh, art image at the end if it completes successfully. And you can upload that key to the server. And that is your pre-shared key. Okay, so in order to disable the settings, it's in the slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config uh, file, I believe. I might have gotten that wrong, but either way, uh, I set the use pem to no. Uh, if you search around for password authentication, you can also change that to a no and then search around for root login and change that to a no. So after you've done that, uh, you can just save the file. Make sure you've uh, done this as a super user or you're gonna end up having to do it again. And after you're done with that, you can essentially just restart the SSH service and the new setting should be there. Okay, so you can just install fail to ban with apt-get and after that, I pretty much just changed most of the settings to five hours and lowered the amount of tries. Uh, I might have kept it at six, I'm not quite sure. But what this will do is essentially block someone from just doing a brute force attack on your uh, system. So if you're having password login, someone can't just try random words over and over again without getting banned for a period of time. So that's a, pretty much about it. There's uh, two, um, let me check here. There is, uh, okay, so there's two actual config files in Debian for um, fail to ban, and one of them will actually override the other one, which is the uh, kind of system, um, I guess, defaults. So the one in the parent uh, directory that's labeled Debian will actually override the default config file with most settings. But in there, it's not actually that complicated. It's just uh, enable SSHD. So I guess in summary, that's kind of the very, very basics of fail to ban. Uh, I might be missing out some of its on some of its functionality, but that's enough information to get it running and make your server a little bit more secure. So.
I guess um, after that, we're gonna talk about Apache configs. Okay, so now to talk about Apache and hosting multiple sites. So Apache includes an example file for its default index.html page. Um, inside those, really, what you need to pay attention to is the uh, server name and the document root. The document root is where Apache will search for like the index.html file or PHP. So in my case, my setups is using static HTML files that are generated on my client system and uses rsync, but that's not the topic of this video. So uh, Apache 2 uh, has a2 disk site and a2 end site. They're relatively easy to use. It uses symlinks and you essentially just uh, oh, Hopefully it uses symlinks. I might need to fact check that, but you use a2 end site to enable site and use a2 disk site to disable site. So I just disabled the default site and copied that file over twice, changed the document roots and the uh, server names, one to tripcodex7.xyz for my uh, blog site, and the other for renegadingcomputing.org for my sales site, which sells Libre booted ThinkPads if you're new to the channel. So after I was done with that, I was essentially done with my installation. Uh, since my website's it just use uh, static HTML over rsync. After installing rsync, I could just run dot dash uh, websync, which is really just a uh, wrapper script for rsync, and my websites were back up. Uh, I think the entire process took about two to three hours, and um, I was watching TV. So, <laughs> anyways, though. Um, that's how to set up a relatively secure web server that hosts multiple websites and hopefully uh, this included some helpful information. Um, I would also suggest that if you're doing anything more than that to install something like uh, UFW which is a very easy to use uh, firewall and I have it set up where only port uh, 2280 and I think 8080 are up. Also the port for Mumble, which I actually have a active uh, Mumble server. And um, for my subscribers that were waiting for a Terry A. Davis video, I am still planning on doing that. Um, I actually did do a Temple OS live run on normal hardware. It was a R61. I kind of have a I'll put a little clip of that. Um, Temple OS is actually pretty neat. And um, I kind of, uh, well actually I feel bad for the, well, I never really uh, knew Terry Davis beyond uh, the information on the internet. So it's hard to say to do like a, a proper send off, but it's been over a year since his death, and I would always like to say, brilliant man, met a sad ending, kind of a costly story of mental illness, but he did actually make a very interesting, I guess, or maybe in some people's eyes, he wrote the word of God, or the, he made his temple, the temple to Terry's God, and I guess I'll leave it at that um, and have a little clip of it booting up. But later I plan to make a video where I'm doing more than just messing around with the uh, live installer, have it actually on a permanent installation on some sort of system. It seems to work on systems that have a uh, SATA compatibility mode and it requires 512 megabytes of RAM and an AMD 64-bit uh, processor. Uh, sorry for the sidetrack, Phil. Um, I hope you guys have a good week and, well, uh, have a good one.